The beauty of this stuff is it clings to the detail, so you get a kind of highlighting effect. Hi there to you, I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you back up here to the loft on Weir Yard. And today we're going to be taking a look at weathering powders and seeing just how they can be used to improve your locomotives, your rolling stock, and even the buildings on your layout. It's actually a really subtle effect, but it's something that I think everybody is well aware of, that many models, when they come out of the box in pristine condition, don't quite look right. And weathering powders are one way that you can make them tone down and look used and part of the landscape. Now today, Humbrol have very, very kindly sent over an assortment of their own weathering powder range. And we're going to be taking a look at just how these can be used to tone down models and make them look much more realistic. These are some really simple techniques that don't need anything expensive like an airbrush and can be used relatively simple using just some cheap brushes and a little bit of patience and time. So big, big thanks to Humbrol for sending these over and also a big thank you to Hornby too, who provided the rolling stock, the locomotive, and also the Scaledale building. And it was really great to see this new product and just see how we could tone it down and improve it so that when it goes on the layout, it really does look a part of the landscape. So come with me and in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, we're going to take a look at this amazing range from Humbrol of their weathering powders and just how simple they are to use. <laughs> If like me you've been building airfix kits for a very long time then you'd be very familiar with the Humbrol range of paints. These include the acrylic range which is a water based paint right through to the enamel paints which is an oil based paint which has been under the Humbrol brand for a very very long time as you can see from the different iterations of the tinlet designs. These include so many different colours that you'd be hard pressed to struggle to find the colour that you need to suit your modelling project. They also make the liquid poly glue for sticking together your plastic kits and the range of enamel thinners that are perfect for thinning down some of those Humbrol paint colours if you need to decrease the viscosity. The range also includes Mascol, which is perfect if you want to mask off small areas on your model so that you can get a good, crisp, clean paint finish. But you may not be aware that the range keeps on going, from decal fix, matte coat, right through to the weathering range. And I have here the black wash and the rust wash, which I've used to great effect in the past. But today I'm really grateful to Humbrol for sending over some of their weathering powders. And I'm going to have a go with these just to see what kind of effects I can get weathering up wagons and also some buildings as well. Just see how they can improve on that factory fresh finish and make things look like they've really been a part of the real world for a very long time. The colours that uh, Humbrol have sent over, well there's um, quite a different range here and I'm going to show you these up close first. So we've got the um, AV0016, which is iron oxide, and uh, I can certainly see that this would be great for inside things like iron ore tippler wagons, but also something that would um, do quite well, just a suggestion of some kinds of um, dirt uh, soil as well, depending on uh, what kind of area the uh, a wagon or building is situated in or is uh, worked through. Chrome Oxide Green AV0015. Now you might look at that and think, what on earth would I need that for? But actually, especially buildings do tend to get a coat of almost like an algae or a verdigris. And uh, this can be used to really just tone a building or a wall down and just give it a sense that it's been sat there with things growing into it uh, for quite some time. So this is going to be particularly useful for buildings. 
AV0018, which is light rust. And the thing about rust is that when it's fresh, it tends to be a much more vibrant colour. But as it ages and darkens down, well, that's where things like dark rust AV0019 come into the equation. And you can see there it's a much darker colour. And if you've ever looked at um, very old rusty artefacts, you'll see that they're not that kind of angry orange uh, that might normally be associated with something that has freshly started to rust. But it's a very dark colour as the iron gets fully oxidised and some dirt gets into the mix. The final colour that Humbrol have kindly sent over, uh, we've got AV0017, which is a dark earth. And this is great for basically um, a, a base colour of just everyday dirt. There's a lot of muck in the atmosphere for things like buildings that gets washed onto it through rain. Um, especially things that don't get cleaned uh, tend to build up a, um, a layer of dirt. And particularly in more industrialised areas, you're going to get more of that. And if you ever look at a car that's been sat on the drive for a long period of time, you'll see that the paintwork goes very dull and has um, dirt in it, even though the car hasn't moved anywhere. And that can build up quite greatly over time. So these are all the colours uh, that have been sent over and what I'm going to be using to apply these is I actually had a look through my makeup drawer and I've got a couple of uh, makeup brushes here which are absolutely perfect for this task. You can pick these up incredibly cheaply. Um, if you go down a market stall, somewhere like that, you don't need expensive for these. In fact, cheaper the better, because then you're not going to feel bad if they get ruined. Um, and something like these, you can pick up a set of five or six of these brushes for a couple of pounds at most. And they are perfect for this kind of work. Now, I may also introduce uh, the uh, black wash, which I've got here. Um, and this, I do love this. I, I don't own an airbrush, but I've done some really nice effects with weathering. Just using a combination of the black wash and uh, the rust wash. These two are really, really good for things like the HTO style hopper wagons. So I've got a couple here uh, and you can see there that um, you can do a variety of different effects just using this is just with those two washes and two different techniques to give a sense of a wagon that is uh, relatively intact just dirty and a wagon which has really suffered with rust and uh, it, it's a strange technique actually because what you're doing is um, rather than rusting out a wagon you're giving a sense of that by covering up most of the um, the paintwork so that you get this almost like a flaked paint effect um, but actually you're just seeing the original colour finish coming through in patches um, but it does work really really well but I'm really interested to see how well these um, dry powders work to really tone down uh, what can often be quite a brash fresh model what I actually want to do is bring in some items that um, Hornby have sent over. I think that this is the perfect synergy between the different product ranges. So I've got here a brake fan and this is going to introduce a few different techniques because unlike the HTO hoppers, which are a steel based construction, there's a lot of wood on these vans. So we're going to have to use some slightly different techniques um, to highlight some of the planking detail, but we're going to be much less heavy on the rust application because wood does not rust. Um, the underframe, of course, is going to be uh, wanting to be distressed down with a layer of um, just dirt, chassis dirt. And these powders are going to be absolutely perfect for that because something like a brake van, um, is not going to get the hard life that a coal hopper would. So we're just going to see what we can do with those powders to really bring out the detail on this wagon. 
The other item as well that Hornby have very, very kindly sent over is one of the all new tin tabernacles in the Scaledale range. And we're going to delve into this box and take a look at this model. Now, I've always been a really great fan of the Scaledale range, these resin buildings that come pretty much as you see on the box. Um, they're a really great way of getting some high quality buildings onto your model railway. But of course, they do come out of the box uh, kind of minty fresh. So what we're going to be looking to do with this is just tone down the building, not make it look like an utter shed of a building, but certainly one that's been out in the elements and has just got that wear and tear associated with a building that might be 30, 40, 50 years old and uh, has been up against a variety of hard winters and uh, general weather. So that's going to be a really interesting contrast to the wagon. Now, I don't have any soot weathering powders, but I'm also going to give a light weathering to this locomotive from the Hornby range. Um, it's a spare one that I've got, and it'll give a really good opportunity to be able to weather this up and then compare it back to an unweathered example um, that I already have out on the shelves and just see what kind of a difference you can do to make a locomotive look not completely neglected. But what I'm going to aim to do is just make it look a little bit work worn. So I'm going to use a few different techniques uh, using the dry powders and also the black dirty wash just to pick out some details and just see what we can do with this. So I got them all out of the box and the first thing that's actually quite noticeable with the tin tabernacle is that it does come pre-weathered and um, just looking at it we've got a general to toning down of the roofs and the walls um, but what I'm going to do is just try and tone that down a little bit more the weathering on the doors doesn't really quite do it for me, but the rest of the weathering is pretty good. And I can see that a, a wash has been applied that has kind of just gone down to the bottom and dried there, which is exactly how you would get it in real life. Um, and that's something when we come to the guards van and the locomotive, I'll talk about that weathering is pretty much always vertical and the reason for this is you may think oh well these vehicles travel at speed so there's going to be weathering moving back with the wind flow it really doesn't happen like that even on some very fast moving uh, things like uh, HSTs the weathering does tend to still be vertically orientated. Now looking at this I think the first thing I want to do is to use the black wash to try and pick out some of the detail, the corrugations, and it really does have a good relief to it. It's a good solid building. If you want to add lighting in, and this is something we've done in previous videos, um, I do recommend that you paint the inside with a matte black. And uh, indeed, in the Humbrol range, number 33, which is matte black, is uh, probably the best colour for that. Just paint it on the inside, be really careful not to get it onto the inside of the windows, and that just stops any bleed through of light, which makes the building kind of look like it's glowing a little bit, and you do get a really great effect. The building also has quite a lot of space inside, so um, it would actually be a really good candidate for a detailed interior as well, which, um, especially if you're going to add lighting to it, would really look something special. So certainly there's a lot of projects to be had out of one of these and you can really make it your own. But in this video we're just going to try and put some more subtle uh, weathering onto this just to make it look a little bit more blended in with the real world. The brake fan I'm going to start with first. So I'm just going to put uh, these out of the way. And when you're actually doing weathering sometimes it does help to have a picture to work from. Now this isn't the exact same brake fan but you can see on here this photograph of a real brake fan the way that the weathering sits on it. So we've got a dirty underframe but if we look to the wooden sides there's no rust there but the planks are picked out the paint is starting to peel but the ducket itself is metal so you can see patches of rust on there but you can also see the way that the uh, rain has washed 
this kind of rust and dirt down in two very distinctive lines on the end all the windows are very dirty as well uh, we've got a lot of dirt on the roof and then if we look to the concrete weights on the end they're pretty bad as well the white handrails aren't too bad although we're going to try and replicate i think this rust over them just there and there um, and there's a lot of inspiration we can take from this prototype picture here so i think first up with this i'm going to just shake up the uh, black wash and i just want to be able to get a, a, a little bit of dirt into the planks again not a huge amount you just don't really have to be particularly neat on this and it, we will be cleaning a lot of this off but it's also going to muck up those windows which is what we want i'm not really too bothered about the uh underframe at this moment in time but i am going to get all the way into there and a bit more just onto the windows. I'm going to do up underneath the veranda just to pick out any detail. And just down this side as well. And these weathering washes are brilliant for this. The kind of um, what is like a, a grimy paint residue held not quite entirely in solution so when you put them on they don't go on like paint it, it's very much like dirty brush cleaning fluid um, but with a much more consistent um, texture to it and don't worry at this stage about um, brush streaks because a lot of this is going to get wiped off and it's a really effective technique now i've got an old scrap piece of uh, it's actually kitchen roll what i'm actually going to do is just clean off a lot of that dirt and you can see how it picks out some of the roof detail on there um, and this is why i said not to worry too much about those brush strokes because they disappear and again on the sides just going to get in there and what I'm actually doing is just cleaning off some of the planking, cleaning some of the uh, handrails. I'm just going to do just on the ends of the verandas, on the other side as well. Move the cloth round if you need to. Just again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, weathering never is perfect in the real world so the more random it ends up the better no two vehicles should be identical and you can see there we've already got it toned down and that effectively is what we've done there there's no distressing to the wagon um, so what we've got there is a sense of some of what you see on this type of wagon the next stage, um, I actually just want to show along the bottom there, you can see where muck accumulates at the bottom of the planks. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to go with the dark earth and be quite careful with these because you don't want them to get everywhere and a different brush, don't use the wet one and just a small, small amount and I'm just going to just start to rub this in and don't worry if you're not quite getting the effect that you're expecting straight out of the box it's the long haul on this so always have your tissue handy just to rub stuff back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to major a little bit on the ducket because that's going to rust and I like the idea of those just sort of like dirty marks that come from the bottom that we saw on that picture. Again, just 
take some of that back and then just along the bottom just get a little bit in there and then the chassis you remember that we didn't really treat the chassis particularly so I'm going to get right in there and this is just it's a little bit angry at the moment that's fine I'm just going to get that brake dust in there get all the brake gear and some of this is a case of being just a little bit rough not so rough as to risk damaging any detail but enough that can get all that we want in there and you can see there that the chassis has started to have detail picked out you can really see those springs in there really really nicely so we're going to turn this around I tend to hold these by the buffers when I do this and again I think we'll start with the chassis on this side just really work that in And like I said, it does not require much. You can also do the front faces on the wheels if you really want to, just to tone them down. I'll do a little bit in here as well. I saw on that photograph that the ends of the veranda were quite dirty. I think quite a bit onto the floor. The floor is going to get dirty. So I'm going to put a little bit extra into the floor. Just dirty up that veranda front. And already we're getting a sense of a, a careworn item of rolling stock that's got dirt and all sorts right the next one that i'm going to go for is light rust and i need to be quite just a little bit sparing with this really really small amount i'm going to just i want a suggestion of rust and then i want to as well just the steps maybe just pick out a few little bits it's almost a case of just resting the brush bristles into place and I'm quite happy with that less is often more you don't want to end up with the thing just basted in these weathering powders a little goes a long way so um, quite happy with that that's looking quite good what I am going to do is some of the dark rust now and I'm going to go over a few little bits of the chassis. And this is going to be just chassis detail. And a little bit for the other side. And then I'm going to do buffer beam ends. And any brush strokes anywhere you're wanting to move weathering downwards, you need to get in there with the brush and downward strokes. It's always the best. So just around these buffers, downward strokes, downward strokes. Subtle is the name of the game. A little bit of dirt on the bottom of the veranda and I think it's safe to say we're largely done. I'm going to go back to the dark earth. Now if I had some soot, uh, the actual weathering powder soot, black soot, I would put a little bit of that on the roof but I'm just going to just a suggestion around that 
stove and that is more than enough so I'm quite happy with that and that's a really good technique with a mix of we've got the uh, a little bit of the black wash and then the rest of this has been done using the powders and we've kind of looked to that photograph just for a little bit of inspiration and that I think has come through quite nicely on this. The next up on this weathering is going to be the locomotive, the XL and Y Pug. Love these locomotives. This comes ready to run with no weathering whatsoever. But what I'm going to do with this is I just want a light suggestion of a work-worn locomotive, not overly worn out, but certainly one which doesn't have quite such a clean, shiny finish. Now for this, I'm not going to use the weathering wash. Instead, I'm going to start out with a dusting of the dark earth, and this will just be to tone down the model. So let's take the lid off that and take our dry brush and again not too much what we're doing here is bringing out some of the detail and just giving a sense of a locomotive that's dirty not filthy just dirty and with this I just want to, to dwell more on the the bottom part of the model than the top with this weathering I think the top would have much more in the way of soot for a start, uh, which would be a very matte black look. Um, and I think too that uh, the dirt from the ground would be more likely to accumulate down and around the bottom. The uh, saddle tank on this would be more likely to get some degree of cleaning so I'm just going to really just try and mat this locomotive down dirty it and again remember weathering goes from the top down weathering is always vertical not horizontal less is more all of this don't be tempted to base the model in the weathering. It just isn't necessary. It's wasteful and you're just going to end up with something that doesn't really feel realistic. So just a little bit of a matting down of the finish. I'm going to a little bit heavier underneath the boiler there. If you go on a little bit heavier than you want, just rub it off with a, something like even a finger. That's fine. And you can already see the locomotive, it's subtly weathered. Now on a, a locomotive, we're going to have some degree of rust on the smoke box door. Maybe a little bit around the, uh, the top of the smoke box, the chimney. That's quite normal. Um, the heat tends to um, kind of uh, um, burn some of the paint off. But again, this is something that needs to be done very subtly. So, try and take as much of that off as possible. Be prepared to work a little bit at taking some of this off if needs be. Just... It tends as well to be around the bottom of the smoke box rather than the top. Just try and get a little bit into there and a little bit just down here. The wheels. Anywhere where maybe steam has got to work and caused a little bit of rusting. I would say that this would be around the bottom, bottom of the locomotive. Again, just look to highlight some of those details. A little bit in there. 
And again, this side, a very small amount, just dusting underneath here, little patches just underneath some of these fittings. And a little bit maybe in the porthole windows. Just add that in. Handrails can quite often end up with a little bit of rust. Steps maybe just gonna get in there. It's a little bit more than I would want, so I'm just gonna rub that back. Like I always say, less is more. So very subtle effects on this. I'm actually gonna try and use some of that iron oxide. I think the redder look to that on the bottom of the smoke box door it might just go a little bit nicer not quite so angry but just a slightly reddish look work it work it and we've got quite a subtle effect on this quite happy with that it's even more subtle than we had with the brake fan, but it's enough that the locomotive looks a little bit more realistic, just around those safety valve vents. Just a little bit there, just a little bit, just worked in there. And we've got that nice subtle finish. Maybe just scrub in there a little bit. And a little tip if you're not happy with any areas, you can always go in with a slightly damp brush like this. And just take some of that away if they think that's too much. And there you have it. A nice subtle weathering effect. So the final item that I want to look at here, and I have made quite a mess, um, it is something, just be aware that you do need to just make sure that you put something like newspaper down. Um, I'm gonna give this a good wash afterwards. But we're gonna look now to the Scale Dale building. And with this, I'm gonna go back to that weathering wash. I think that uh, that's a really good starting point give it a good shake just to try and uh, get a kind of sense of dirt and i think as well that uh, this will help just highlight some of the the detail tone the building down and kind of start to make that weathering your own with the weathering wash, you can go over the windows a little bit just to dirty them down. You will revisit that. I think that this makes for a slightly more subtle weathering effect. Those doors, that brown, I wasn't so keen on, so I'm just gonna try and mute that down a little bit with uh, a little bit of a dark wash. Again, early stages, don't worry if it doesn't immediately pop for you. That is absolutely fine. A lot of these take multiple stages to bring out the best in a model. So don't think that you just waft a brush over and it looks perfect then and there. Just got to put a little bit of time in. And then actually, once you've got to the point where you're kind of happy with this, um, it's something that you can just leave it maybe to set just slightly. I'm also going to just uh, a little bit of dirt onto the uh, bell house up here. And then I think a little bit of dirt on the roof. Again, just toning things down. And this also helps to blend all of the different weathering techniques together. And you can see it kind of highlighting all of those uh, the ridges in the corrugation effect so i'm just going to leave that for a few minutes 
just to start to set. I'm just going to start rubbing some of this down. Again, just blends some of this in. And you can see that we've got that really nice effect where it just kind of collects at the bottom. And it's a much more subtle effect. Pay particular close attention on the roof, I think. So what I'm going to look to do now is, again, quite a subtle weathering job on this, I think. So I'm going to go for the dark earth. And with this, again, less is more. And what you'll find is that uh, any dirt tends to accumulate down near the bottom. With the black ever so slightly moist, it just helps to take some of this weathering. In the back of the building, I'm going to add more weathering than to the front. I'm guessing that round the back, it would be somewhat more neglected. So we've got just these dirty patches. And then more towards the front, a little bit less. This is just matting the building down slightly. What you will have is a much more unique look to the building. Yeah, just up and into there. And maybe have that as an effect. The guttering's not quite working right, so we've got more dirt into that corner. This is quite a tired building. We're looking at turning this to how it would have looked. Probably, I remember these in the Swansea Valley, maybe early 1980s. Just getting that right in there, toning down the green. And this is where the green comes in. For a little bit of that kind of moss, verdigris, and we can just add in some of the green. Especially on areas where you might feel that uh, there's just that little bit too much dark. And because this is matte, it does mean that you don't get any shine. So I'm just going to work my way around. A little bit of this green. A little bit more on this end. And it just actually makes the previously applied weathering a little bit more subtle but less shiny as well. I'm going to just put a little bit to the roof especially where damp and verdigris would accumulate. More towards the bottoms. Just work that in. I'm also going to just a little bit just underneath there. Just got two more passes to make. I'm going to do some of the light rust very, very carefully. A little tiny bit of rust. And Again, just down there. Just work it in. Again, a little tiny bit of rust. Rub through that if you're not happy. 
just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit of rust into the corner, the corner as well. So there you have it, very, very subtle weathering using powders and a little bit of that dark wash. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you liked what you saw, we've got a link in the description box down below to help you find these weathering powders. Also, don't forget that you can head on over to Patreon and help to support the channel to make the videos that you want to see. Tickle that like button, share this video, and if you haven't already done so, do please consider subscribing. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, OORail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Graham Foster, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, and Alan Dickerson. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.